My name is Paulina Constantia, and I welcome you to my home studio here in Vancouver. I am one of the featured artists in the Exploration Festival as part of the Asian Heritage Month celebration here in Vancouver. I never really intended to pursue art. It was, um, it was a journey for me. Um, I started in fashion. And when I was about 17 years old, I started designing shoes and clothing. And then eventually I got into music. Okay, another journey. And then, and then one time I ended up um, meeting some artists at a gallery and I heard about classes and so I took a class. And after about a month, I, had, I was so keen on making more art and they said, hey, why don't you join us in an exhibition? I said, are you sure? And they said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I started and then after that, I had, I kept making art and then a couple of years later, I had my solo exhibition and it was just, just one after another. Anyway, it was in 1997 that somehow it really dawned on me that maybe this is my calling because um, I got this grant at um, the Vermont Studio Center. So from the Philippines, I came to Vermont in, in the heart of winter, in the height of winter. And that was my very first winter. And I met all these artists and they seemed to accept me. And, you know, I was like, oh, maybe I am really making art. <laughs> and then after that, um, I did a show in New York. And anyway, to make the long story short, um, one thing led to the other and there was no, you know, um, I don't know, I, there's no looking back, I guess, they're just moving forward. I'm working on um, a collection called Taga Isla, or um, in English, I would say Island Folks. And this is um, a feature presentation at the Philippine Consulate General. Um, they actually invited me to do this show in um, at the Consulate General because um, they're celebrating Maritime and Archipelagic Nation Awareness Month, um, which falls in September in the Philippines. Um, this is part of our culture in the Philippines, so it's our heritage, it's our um, life, it's our culture. So um, expect to see um, how we make the most of our ocean life and. Um, how it supports us and how um, it enriches our lives. My culture plays a very big role in my art. It's basically the underlying theme and texture of my work. And um, I always think that my art is like a, a visual diary. And these are just chapters of my life that I'm sharing with the viewer. and. Um, with the hope that they can relate to the universal, um, you know, universality of the experiences because it's just all part of humanity, you know, the love, the connectedness, um, celebrating each other. Primarily, um, there's two things I like to show a lot in my work and that simple joys and connectedness. And this is a large part of my culture because uh, in the Philippines, where I grew up, uh, you know, it's like historically our country's been riddled with troubles, you know, from political to economic to natural, you know, and um, let me cite an example. For example, if um, there's a massive typhoon and that would practically mean that um, after the typhoon, there's no water, there's no light, there's no nothing. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to find food. But anyway, but people somehow back home, they figure out a way to survive and how to help each other, you know? And um, that's a large part of what I saw growing up, like how people make the most of what they have. And um, to, a, to a large extent, um, you can't, you're somehow, <laughs> to a large extent, you can't just complain. You have to do something about the situation. So. Uh, you're gonna move, you know, because you can't just cry all day. You gotta keep figuring out what your next step is and how you could uh, make the most out of what you have. 
So that's the, um, the theme and the texture of my work, basically, from my culture about um, simple joys, connectedness, and a large part of it is resilience, you know, and how you can make the most out of your life situation and trying to bloom wherever life plants you. So. I have many favorites, but um, since you ask, I, I probably should share with you that um, two of my recent favorites are um, my Moments of Motherhood collection, which was a, a traveling exhibition. So it traveled around Asia for um, actually uh, for the span of two years. And um, it hit um, six cities around Asia. And in, in those cities, I also um, interacted with uh, marginalized groups. And so, you know, like in Thailand, in Phuket, I, um, I was at a um, Burmese refugee camp. So I interacted with um, children of migrant workers who, um, who've been um, somehow educated by um, some local nuns um, using uh, stalls for horses and it's been turned into classrooms so it was nice to teach there and um, during the moment of motherhood exhibition I also got to do programs that were um, targeted towards having mom and child um, do art together so it was a very interesting interaction because you know, usually it's just for moms or for kids but then they work on the same piece and see where it it takes them and um, that was a challenge because some moms thought that oh they could just drop off their kid and we're like no 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 mom and kid together and another thing was that a dad showed up and he said am I okay I'm a dad I know it's moments of motherhood but I want to be part of this too <laughs> so he joined it was the only guy in the mom and kid um, workshop so that was moments of motherhood and um, another project I had was um, Pedaling for Change, which was um, a program in conjunc conjunction with um, Tindak Sugbu or Bike for Cebu, um, which was our endeavor to promote bike as a solution, a simple solution to many of our society's problems. So um, that was exciting for me because um, um, it wasn't just all talk, you know, it wasn't like, oh, draw it, whatever, but we were really showing that it was in my painting at the same time we had the actual objects that were in my painting because this was part of a bike museum so for example if we showed that you could make a bc lavadora which is basically um you could wash your clothes not by using electricity but by just pedaling but we actually had the actual machine that we made with the bike and then also there's like my son uh, demonstrating how to make um, a blended smoothie using the bicycle. And you know, it was, it was really fun. And people were like, oh my God, I could do that. You know, it's like, it's exciting how it's not just a, um, just an artwork. It's just um, chronicling uh, the, the projects that we've done to, you know, to promote bike culture in our city. So um, that was exciting. So my art is basically my it's work for me and it's also my joy and for me it's a way of reflecting on my life and practicing um, appreciation and gratitude you know for life and for the gifts that are entrusted to me to us you know it's like because um, I don't know whoever said this but apparently <laughs> If a lot is given to you, a lot is expected of you too. So uh, I'm not saying I'm the greatest artist of this, of that, or whatever medium, but whatever little you have, you'll be surprised as to where it can take you and what good you can do with them, you know, because if you're going to spend all your life just saying, oh, I'm not good enough, or this is not acceptable, you're not going anywhere and you're not going to be able to do anything with your life or even be able to contribute. In the end, we all have a little something special, a little something to share. And that's all that really matters. And you'll be surprised. There's a lot of people who could benefit from what you have to offer. <laughs>